This video is sponsored by Audible. More information at the end of the video. Hey guys, welcome back. Yep, that, that title is correct. You did not read me wrong. I did not pull a Rick Astley on you guys. We need to talk about it. We really do. There are going to be no spoilers in this video, so don't worry about me spoiling anything for you. You should be able to watch this video just fine. Where do we begin? Um, well, firstly, actually, all I can talk about is the first four hours of the game. Uh, I can't talk about anything else after that. Uh, so just, I'll get that disclaimer out of the way. <laughs> but, uh, let me just... <laughs> Let me tell you guys, um, it's fucking good. <laughs> it's good. It's really, really good. It feels so quintessentially Halo in almost every way, despite elements of it being totally new and totally different to any Halo experience yet. It feels so quintessentially Halo. And I'm so, I'm so happy about that because there was obviously a slight concern with the game being a bit different and it's like structure that it was going to feel... No, 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 no. It feels very Halo, my friends. Very Halo. Um, the open world is so, so unbelievably good. I'm genuinely surprised. I was looking forward to it, but I, I did not expect to love it as much as I did. There was maybe the odd time where I found the encounters got a little bit repetitive and stale, but broadly speaking, it was so good. I mean, one of my favorite things about the open world was the fact that it felt so lived in. Like, for example, one of the first things I did was grapple to the top of this really tall cliff at the side of me. And firstly, I was like, there's no way they'll let me get to the top of this. And then I was like, well, if they do let me get to the top of it, it's probably just going to be like an empty little bit of rock and that'll be it. I get to the top of that cliff, right? Not only can I stand up there and chill out, chill about up there, there's also a bloody jackal sniper wandering about and a grunt mule just wandering through the environment so naturally. There's a jackal sniper just by the- <laughs> There's a jackal just- Oh, dude. Do, 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 do. It, it genuinely feels like a world that is lived in as opposed to like one big curated play space that has been specifically designed for an enemy here and an enemy there and an enemy there. It feels like a true natural environment. There are other things that I won't get to that are in the environment as well that just add to that. It's a really natural feeling world. Yeah, the map is uh, is really, really good. I think you guys are going to love it. Banished kill hero for good. Right, so... One of the things we need to talk about is the exploration of the map itself, the way that you explore it, because I'm, right, I'm going to be honest, it didn't really live up to my expectations. Um, reason being, <laughs> it completely exceeded them. Uh, the traversal of the environment feels like Halo 2 on steroids. That level of freedom that you get in Halo 2 on Delta Halo or outskirts when you just freely walk outside the map and explore the vistas of Delta Halo or of New Mombasa or whatever. It feels like that. There are no barriers pretty much anywhere. I had to really, really go out of my way to even find like a return to battlefield barrier, let alone a hard barrier or a soft barrier. They seem almost non-existent. I think I found two hard barriers. That was it. The, the freedom in this game, I, I don't think you guys are ready for it because it genuinely took me back when I when I was just walking around the Zeta Halo by myself, grappling up cliff sides, exploring them, exploring mountain ranges, exploring valleys and ravines. It feels just perfect. It, I could not have asked for it to be any better than it, than it actually is. You guys are, you, yeah, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And as for exploration, there are caves as well. And I won't say too much about them, but uh, they're very cool. And they're even cooler, given the fact that you have a flashlight again. The flashlight is officially back. And there are some times where it really, really adds to the atmosphere. Uh, big fan of that. So one of the big features of the open world is the FOBs or FOBs, the forward operating bases that you have to recapture. And I, with the way they talked about them pre-release, it seemed like they were kind of necessary. I'm pretty sure they are totally optional. You don't have to do a single one of them. You can just do the main campaign and that's fine. You don't have to touch them. I would recommend touching them because they're pretty fun. But what it does is it allows the game to be played in three very distinct ways, right? You can play the game as like an open world exploration, rally the troops kind of experience. You can play it as a mostly traditional level based Halo game. Or you can do what I did and play it as a combination of the two put together, which I think is the best way to do it. It really does allow for very dynamic ways of playing the game. 
uh, and it's a very fun experience. One of the things they talked about a lot pre-release that, I'm going to be honest, sounded like a bit of marketing smoke and mirrors to me, was the different ways that you could attack enemy bases. Like, you could go in, like, head-on with, like, a chopper or something, going through the front door, or you could sneak around the back, or you could take them out from a distance. That sounded really, like, smoke and mirrors to me pre-release, I'm not going to lie. It sounded like very, like, marketing talk. But, nope, it's, it genuinely isn't. I would, again, legitimately amazed by the amount of ways that you could attack bases and outposts and stuff. I found it. it really is as dynamic as you want it to be. The only thing that I will say, and this isn't a problem with Infinite, it's more so a problem with Halo overall. It's been a problem since Halo 1 and it still kind of is. Stealth isn't really an option still. Um, I really wish it was viable. Like. You can snipe targets from really far away, and sometimes the other enemies in the camp won't hear it or they won't notice. But most of the time, as soon as you engage one enemy, like that's it. You just you, you have to go in all guns blazing, which I think kind of sucks. I really wish that there would have been some like sort of ultra stealth option where I can literally like MGS my way in and just take out every like guard, every patrol unit without anyone noticing. But that's not the case. But still, even despite that. The bases really are as dynamic as they made them sound. Uh, I, again, I'm, I'm shocked they really are as good as they said they were, because they, they are. <laughs> they really are. I think if I had to describe Halo Infinite's open world and kind of structure in a nutshell, I would say that it feels like the second level of Halo 1, Halo, mixed with MGS5 and Shadow of Mordor, but also with your traditional Halo levels thrown in as well. For the most part, it really is the best of both of those kind of genres of games. I think it is a really good combination. I was really surprised how well Halo's gameplay actually suited this kind of game. I don't know why it was a surprise given that Halo and the Silent Cartographer are like two of the best video game missions in the history of humanity, right? But just actually playing it like this really cemented to me how well Halo's gameplay is suited for stuff like this. And almost like it kind of made me realize that Halo's gameplay being locked to like super linear levels in the past has been a bit of a waste. Like there's so much more that could have been done with it and it's good to see that finally happening. Obviously, not going to talk about the story much in this video, but some things I will say is that the story is really, really mysterious. Um, Cutscenes are fantastic. Not going to show any, but they are. <laughs> They're bueno, guys. They're very bueno. Jen Taylor's performance in this game is the single best video game voice acting performance I've ever seen in my entire life. And... I've played a lot of games with really, really, really good voice acting. If Jen doesn't win an award for this, then there is no God. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know how she can't win an award for this game. I'm tempted right now to book a flight to LA and go and pay the bloody Oscar commission or whoever it is that gives out Oscars to play this game and tell me that she does not deserve an Oscar for this, even though they don't do Oscar video game awards. She deserves genuinely as many awards as, as is possible for this. She was fantastic in every game, Halo 4 in particular, but this is a step of, above the rest. I think you guys are going to realise when you play it what I mean. It's just like standing ovation levels of good. Genuinely. I'm not saying that because I'm biased towards Halo. Genuinely standing ovation levels of good. They smell even worse than I imagined. You can smell them. Well, an array of sensors in your armor can, and I analyze the input. You smell fine, by the way. On the topic of voice acting as well, uh, the audio logs actually really surprised me. I didn't like them in Halo 5, and when they said they were doing them again in Infinite, I was a bit like, eh, like, it's not that interesting. But they were really good. I was genuinely really surprised. I think people are going to love them. Uh, the boss fights and their theming, oh my god, oh my god, incredible. Absolutely incredible. So good, so, so good. There are things that I would, I had hoped that they were going to do with the bosses in this game and the theming of them and like the whole like build up to them that I was really hoping they would do, but I was like, nah, don't be too outlandish. Like, don't get your hopes up too much. I'm kind of happy that I did because they really, really lived up to my expectations. However, with all of that said, uh, it, it wasn't perfect. I do have some issues with it. Uh, first one being the weapon sandbox. I felt it was far too small and limited. Uh, Infinite going for like a kind of trimmed down weapon sandbox might seem good on paper, but I'm not a huge fan of it in multiplayer, and I'm even less of a fan of it in the campaign. 
there just doesn't feel like there's that much variety there compared to a game like Halo 3, for example, like where, yeah, not every weapon is super, super useful, but there's variety there. There's cool stuff to mix and match. And I really just didn't feel like that was the case at all for Infinite. Uh, and then kind of an extension of that, I think Infinite's HUD that I already don't like, it was even worse in campaign um, to the point where it was genuinely interfering with my gameplay, uh, which is the complete polar opposite of what HUD is supposed to do, right? A HUD is supposed to be easily laid out, so when you're in the heat of battle, you can very easily and quickly access the piece of information you want. You want grenades? Top left. Ammo? Top right. Equipment? Top left, but no grenades. Motion sensor? Bottom left, etc, right? That's not the case in Infinite, and I found myself in in gameplay in the middle of like a fight throwing the wrong grenade or using the wrong equipment and dying because of it because the HUD just doesn't give me the information that I need as quickly and efficiently as all of the HUDs from Halo 1 to Halo 5 did. I really think that 343 need to add a classic HUD option in this game because this HUD doesn't cut it. There are times in the gameplay where I wanted to, for example, throw a spike grenade, but I couldn't access the information quick enough to see which grenade I had active. So I just throw all my grenades until eventually I got to a spike grenade and it's just, it's not great. I found myself genuinely dying in gameplay because of it so many times and a classic hood option would make that so much better. On the topic of equipment or rather equipment, I'm going to be honest, it didn't feel like equipment in the campaign. It felt like abilities. However, this might surprise you, but I actually didn't mind that. In fact, I rather kind of kind of liked it. I think the idea of spawning a player in Halo with the entire powerful sandbox inside of them instead of on the map to go and find is just so counterintuitive to Halo's formula. But here, with how open and dynamic the encounters are in the world, I actually think it kind of worked. Like, for example, if I'm assaulting a base, I feel like if I had to go and kill a brute to go and pick up a grapple hook, instead of just having it in my back pocket, it would really limit the dynamicness of the encounters. So I actually think that that works here. Like I said in regards to the hood though, just a few minutes ago, sorting through equipment in the, especially in the heat of battle is so, so awkward. It's, this hood is not good. It's, it's gotta, they've gotta give us a classic one at some point. Like I'm pressing all these random button combos to try and swap between grapple hook and, and threat sensor in the heat of combat. And I just can't, it's, especially on controller, it's so awkward. I was thinking this might be better on keyboard and mouse where you can just bind an ability to a single key. So I could just press like four to access threat sensor, one to access grapple, for example. That'll be a lot easier then, but on controller, sorting between them, especially in combat is really, really counterintuitive. Another concern that I had pre-launch was that with all the pictures of the nighttime they were showing us, it didn't look very dark. It, really just look like the same level of light as daytime but with a darker sky and that is the case in game it was nowhere near as dark as i wanted it to be like i wanted it to be full-on horror game pitch black dark levels of darkness where i had to rely on my flashlight or on the lights of the armor of the banished to spot them that's sadly not the case. Uh, I will say, don't get me wrong, nighttime is beautiful. It's so aesthetic. I just wish it was darker. But the different encounters at night are very cool. But yeah, uh, that's that's all I'm going to talk about for now. Um, I'm so happy. <laughs> I cannot wait. Tomorrow, I'm uploading my reaction to the first bit of the game. I cannot wait for you guys to watch it. I can't wait. I can't. I can't wait. It's... In case you couldn't tell, I'm happy. And on that note, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video that is very fitting, Audible. Halo Infinite season has officially begun and Audible will be your best companion. Well, besides me, of course. With the absurd wealth of Halo lore available on Audible, you'd be simply wrong not to jump in. We've got Divine Wind, Shadows of Reach, the entire Fauna trilogy, and so many more ready to be listened to to prepare yourself for Infinite, and you can even try Audible for 30 days free on us. And furthermore, right now, for a limited time, you can save 60% on your first three months of Audible, which equates to only $5.95 a month for more Halo lore than even Mendicant Bias could get his hands on. This Halo season, and also holiday season as well, I kind of forgot about that, <laughs> give yourself the gift of Halo lore and audiobooks by going to audible.com slash hiddenxperia, or by texting hiddenxperia to 500 to get your free trial, and for a limited time, save 60% on your first three months of Audible. 
Once again, that's audible.com slash hidden Xperia or text hidden Xperia to 500 500 to dive into Halo's lore today. So that's all I'm going to talk about for now. I'm going to have tons of content coming out in the next few days. If you guys have any content you want me to make or you have any questions about the game, I might even do like an infinite campaign Q&A video. So if you have any questions about the game, ask them down below and I might answer them in that video. But yeah, make sure you hit that bell. Make sure you check out Audible, the one and only iconic sponsor. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I want to give a massive shout out to Superfish7 and Pep Demora for becoming new iconic ones over on Patreon. Thank you very much, my friends. I appreciate that greatly. And of course, to everyone else who continues to support me over there, thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's looking good, guys. It's looking good. <laughs> and I'll catch you all in the next one.